Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in two different apps. I'm using Lightroom and I'm using Luminar Neo together because they're kind of a power couple, to be honest. They are dynamic duo. They really allow you to kind of double up in terms of uh, getting a, an impactful, powerful edit using some things that I consider the str uh, strengths of each app. And yes, the apps definitely have some overlap in terms of what they're capable of doing but I also think that they complement each other really nicely. I'm gonna walk through kind of what I'm currently doing in uh, Lightroom and Luminar and how I'm using them together. And my workflow is kind of evolving as it kind of always does, really. I try not to stay too you know, fixed or stagnant, but um, the, the, the use of Lightroom in my workflow is new to me. I used it years ago and I talked about that in a recent video. I've, uh, in the last few weeks, really just kind of picked it back up again. Anyway, I'm having fun and I've got an image here. And this is from a bracket set, hence it's a little bit dark. Uh, and so far all I've done is a little bit in transform, which kind of straightened the image a little bit, fixed the vertical slightly, and I did a slight crop. But I like to start here with just the basic stuff, right? So the first thing is of course to let's brighten the image a little bit. I always hit the J key here in uh, Lightroom, which I also do when I'm using a raw file in uh, Luminar, but I'm gonna hit the J key. You can see where I get the red and the blue overlays, red indicating, hey, it's blown out, the blue indicating, hey, it's completely dark. Easy fix here, but I just wanna come in and make some adjustments. I'm gonna pull these highlights down, shadows up, uh, the whites I'm gonna experiment with a little bit, and I'm gonna lift the blacks. I'm actually gonna pull those shadows up a little bit further. I think that looks pretty good. Another thing I'm gonna do is go into color grading, and the beauty of the color grading tool is that it has this luminance for each of the different tonal areas, uh, and that's unrelated to the color. So I can actually go into the midtones and slightly lift the luminance of the midtones. You can see that that's brightening the midtones in the image, which I think is really cool. I can then also go into highlights and do the same. I wanna brighten them a little bit. The bottom line is I think the photo is looking pretty good now. So the before, and the after, and that's kind of my base uh, file, so to speak, here in Lightroom. And what I wanna do is jump over to Luminar with this photo, take advantage of some of my favorite tools in Luminar, and then come back and use some of my favorite tools in Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Photo, and Edit In, and I'm gonna pop down here to Luminar Neo, and I'm gonna do all that. That just looks totally fine. It's editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments, just to be clear. You can send your raw file from Lightroom, if you use that as your catalog, send your raw file over to Luminar and do things there. But since I already made adjustments, I'm gonna send a copy with those Lightroom adjustments. Click Edit, it's gonna open up in Luminar, and it's gonna land on the Presets tab, which I don't wanna use a preset here. You can see, there we go, it's come through, landed on Presets, but I wanna go straight to Edit and skip over any presets so that I can kinda of dial this in and be specific and targeted with what I'm about to do. Now, one of the reasons I jump over to Luminar is Super Contrast, which is honestly, it's uh, I talk about it a lot, I know, but it's just so good. It's just such a such a good tool or filter, whatever you want to call it. Um, I usually go about a third of the way on each of these and then just kind of play around here. Another thing I like to do, same thing I just did in Lightroom a moment ago, is hit that J key, and you can see um, now I added contrast in the highlight, so it's getting a little bit bright there, and um, I think maybe I can pull that back a little bit. Maybe something about like that. Let me try mid-tones, just kind of playing around here. Okay, I think I'm gonna land on something like that. I'm gonna hit the J key, turn that off. But if you look at the before super contrast and the after, just, just a little bit of massaging the light, which is what I love about super contrast. And effectively, when I'm just in Luminar, I'll, I'll use develop raw and then super contrast. That's always my one-two punch to start an image. I kind of did the same thing here, just that my my one punch, my first punch, so to speak, was in Lightroom, and then I hit Super Contrast once I got over here. But some of the things that I love about Luminar are the color tools, which is what I'm gonna go into here. And I wanna use Golden Hour. This was a sunrise, and there was some nice light, and a little bit of nice color. I wanna amp that up a little bit, and the color tools I just absolutely adore in Luminar, as you probably know if you've been here and seen some of my videos before. So I used Golden Hour down there in the landscape uh, section, down here in Essentials, and then I'm using Toning. And by the way, if you're not familiar, Toning, Super Contrast, and Color Harmony are at the top for me in this category called Favorites because I faved them. They actually live in some of these other categories, but they're at the top once you fave them. So if it looks different in your copy, that's why. Uh, Color Harmony, I'm gonna go ahead and pop into this one because there's a couple of amazing tools here. 
I like brilliance and warmth. I'm going to do that a little bit, add a little vibrance, brilliance, a little bit of warmth. I'm also going to take the warm colors, dragging that to the right on split color warmth. Just makes them a little bit warmer. I don't want to go too much because I've already got a bit here. In fact, I'm going to dial that back just a little bit. Uh, and then the cool colors, I'm going to go slightly left, which basically makes the cool colors cooler. So I uh, love that about split color warmth. It gives you a nice little bit of like fine tune control over color. So there it is before, and there it is now, slightly bit warmer. In fact, maybe I'll give back a little bit of that. So I like what I've got so far. And another tool that I really love is Accent AI, but I wanna be very targeted and specific here. So I'm gonna get a, a radial gradient, and I'm gonna drag it to about like that. I am gonna invert, and then I'm gonna uh, kind of squish it, I guess, for lack of a better term there. And what I want to do is just kind of drag it across that area. I'm going to reduce this feathering a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's nice and wide. It's okay if things go off the screen on either side. That's fine. doesn't matter. And what I want to do is just pop that center section a little bit. So I'm going to use this Accent AI and containing it with that radial mask just helps you uh, keep from overdoing the rest of the photo. It's a nice little pop in that center section, which I can show you now. There it is before, and there it is now, without really overdoing it across the rest of the photo. So I like that, and if you look at my before and after here in Luminar, there's my before, and there's my after. I've got a nice pop in the image, and I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit Apply, send this back to Lightroom, and then do a few things in Lightroom, take advantage of some of the powerful tools there. Okay, I'm back here in Lightroom, and as you can see, I need to pull the highlights down a little bit, so I'm going to do that. Didn't take much, really got those under control. I'm going to play a little bit with the temperature and the tint, just because I kind of like to. Uh, I'm going to go a little warmer and a little bit of a tint, simply because I kind of like magenta in sunrise, sunset kind of photos. Just adding a little bit of that is something that's um, uh, just something I like. I add a little bit of contrast, and then uh, I've long been a fan of clarity. In fact, uh, the first time I ever opened Lightroom and started using Clarity, when I first used Lightroom years ago, I was pretty excited about it. And, you know, I, I think 10's a little much. Maybe I want to do about a 6 or 7. Okay, now that I've done that, I want to get into masking. The masking, of course, is pretty incredible in Lightroom, as I talked about in that previous video. And what I want to do is go add a sky mask. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty quick. It's pretty accurate. And while it's not exactly perfect, that's okay. I'm just going to pull the exposure down slightly a slight bump in contrast. I'm gonna slightly up the temperature and the tint. It's just giving a little bit more to that sky, just because I like to, and a slight bump in saturation. So I don't wanna do a lot, but I wanna give a little bit more to that sky. So if I look at the before and the after, I think that looks pretty good, to be honest. Now I see a couple of birds flying. I might would go in there and just take those out. I'm just not gonna do that in this video, but uh, before like publishing this photo, that's something that I would probably do. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a couple of more masks to get a little specific and targeted with what I want to do next. And the first thing I'm going to do is get a linear gradient, and I want to drag that in right here along the bottom. And, you know, maybe something about like that, actually. Um, what I like to do is create a really wide gradient zone, which for me is anything from the bottom line up. It starts to just fade that effect into your photo which um, helps with the blend and the transition. And so I'm going kind of low here in terms of uh, where I'm placing this linear gradient and then kind of a, a wide gradient zone. And all I want to do is basically just drop that exposure a little bit. And so maybe something like that. And I think I might take the texture down as well. And that kind of smooths out some of that water, which just something I like. Um, that's just a personal preference. Well, frankly, I guess everything I'm doing in this video is personal preference, as is the case with every video I make. But, you know, hey, you know, edit to taste, season to taste. That's what I like to say, and I think that's important. While I'm at it, I actually might add a tiny bit of tint just to kind of keep it matchy-matchy, so to speak, with the sky, and perhaps a little bit of warmth as well, and maybe a slight bump in saturation. Just don't want to do too much. I've got a lot of color, and I don't want to overwhelm the senses. But I've got a nice little mask in the bottom, and now that I've done that, I'm going to do the same thing but in the sky. So another linear gradient, and this one's going to come down uh, fairly straight, I think, on a really wide gradient zone. And, you know, maybe something about like that. I make it a little bit straighter, I guess. Uh, and, you know, maybe something about like that. I don't want it to come too far down onto those buildings, but I'm going to slightly drop the exposure. 
And that's kind of acting a little bit like a polarizer across the top of the sky, just slightly dropping that exposure. I could go a little bit more and get away with it. And kind of what I'm doing by creating that linear gradient on the bottom and that other linear gradient on the top is kind of framing the photo because even though it's colorful and I like the reflections, in fairness, it's a bit of dead space. And I'm kind of covering it up because if you make a section of a photo darker, it's less likely to draw the attention of the viewer. So it's going to be a little bit darker there. And now that I've done that, I'm going to get into a couple of more masks just to play and have a little bit more fun. And this is going to be a color range mask. And the first one is I'm going to come in and all you do is, as it says here, is click anywhere to sample colors. I'm going to get a little bit of this blue. It's kind of blue-ish. I'm going to click there. And now that I've got that, I'm just going to experiment with darkening that a little bit. And let me try to play a little bit with the saturation. So maybe a little bit on saturation and a little bit an exposure drop, not too much. I don't want to go too high, but if I turn this off, there it is before and the after, it just adds a little bit more drama and a little bit more contrast, which I kind of like having in the photo. And then I'm going to add one more color range mask. So plus to create a new mask and once again, color range and again, click anywhere to sample the colors. I'm now going to click over here in the orange and all I'm going to do is actually increase that exposure a little bit. And that creates a little bit more contrast in the sky where I'm playing off the warm colors and the cool colors. The cool colors tend to me, the cool colors should be uh, darker and warm colors are kind of brighter. So I'm kind of accentuating that a little bit. And I might even experiment a little bit with adding a tiny bit of warmth to that and maybe a tiny bit of tint. Just want to be careful. But if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after. It's created a little bit more contrast in the sky. And I also think it helps a little bit to frame the skyline because without this, there it is before, it's a little bit darker back there in those orange yellow kind of areas. And now it's a little bit brighter, also a little bit brighter there in that reflection. So just kind of brighten that up a little bit and uh, I can close the masking menu. I'm pretty much done with that. So now that I'm done, let me just show you the before and after. There's the before. Now this is the Luminar edit. Uh, it came back with a little bit of bright spots in the sky, which we fixed easily. Uh, and it had some nice color pop that I took advantage of the tools that I love in Luminar to do that, along with that Accent AI to really pop that center section. And then using masking and just being targeted and specific here back in Lightroom, I was able to convert it to that. So overall, I can go compare the original and this photo. Let me pull those up. So there you go. That's basically what the photo looked like originally on the left and on the right hand side, of course, that's the edited version with basic adjustments in Lightroom. I jump over to Luminar for some key targeted things, super contrast, X and AI with a radial mask, some color work, all things I love to do and do on a lot of my photos in Luminar. And then back here in Lightroom, using some of the power of the mask, the color range mask, and different things like that to really target specific areas and kind of dial in my edit overall. And that's what I love about using these two tools together. They're very complimentary. So many great tools in both. It just goes together so well. It can really help you get an edit that you really are excited about. And in this case, I'm excited about that one. I love my colors. Uh, this is Austin where I live and I just like the skyline and I love reflections. So being able to put all that together with a nice sky and some nice color makes me kind of happy. That's how I'm using Lightroom and Luminar Neo together. There's a lot of things that you can do in each product, but I think putting them together, it's really like a dynamic duo, kind of a power couple, like I said, that really gives you powerful results without too much effort, to be honest, because they both have such great AI tools and regular adjustment tools that are just fun to use. That's what I'm doing today, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about things you can do in your own photos. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up that tells YouTube that, hey, you like what I'm doing and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video, my friends. I'll be back really soon. You guys take care and until then. Adiós.